Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. In our previous video, we learned how to do electron configurations and we learned how to follow all the rules for our elements. However, not every element follows those rules exactly. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a couple of these rule breakers. Our first rule breaker that we are going to take a look at is chromium, atomic number 24. Let's first write out the expected electron configuration just following our rules. So chromium, that would be argon, fourth period, 4s12, 3d1234. However, what we actually find is that the electron configuration for chromium is not this, but this. So you can see that an electron was taken from the 4s orbital and placed in the 3d orbital. And you're probably asking yourself, why did the atom decide to do that? As we have continued to study the atom, what we have discovered is that orbitals that are either half filled or completely filled are lower in energy. So chromium, when it promoted an electron to the 3d orbital, it made that 3D orbital half filled. This is a lower energy arrangement than just having the 3D orbital, orbital partially filled. It's better if you can fill it by half. Now what does this do to the 4S? Notice it also becomes a half filled orbital. So atoms are really looking for the lowest energy state. And therefore, it seems like they're breaking the rules, but they're really not breaking the rules. They are following the lowest energy state. Let's clear the periodic table and take a look at some other of these exceptions. This time, let's take a look at silver, atomic number 47. Our expected electron configuration for silver is this. Krypton coming down to period 5, 5s, 1, 2, 4d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. However, the actual electron configuration for silver is this. Again, you see silver has promoted an electron from the 5s orbital to the 4d orbital. So this completes the 4d orbital. This is now full and it makes the 5s half full. Again, silver is looking for an arrangement of electrons that gives it the lowest possible energy state and it is better to have a full orbital and a half full orbital than to have this 4d9 here which is just almost full but not quite. You also see this down in the lanthanide and actinide series. So if we take a look at europium, atomic number 63, our expected electron configuration is this. And now you can probably guess what europium does. It's going to take this one electron in the 5D and it is gonna promote it to the 4F. 
So what we find is that the electron configuration for europium is actually this. And now we have a full 6s orbital and a half full 4f orbital. I am going to clear and show you one more. The last exception I want to show you is for palladium, atomic number 46. Here is our expected electron configuration. And here is what we actually find for palladium. So you can see that palladium took both of these electrons in the 5s and promoted it to the 4d so it would end up with a full orbital in the 4d's. So atoms are not limited to just moving one electron. They can move more than one electron if there is a lower energy arrangement. Suffice to say that even though we think we have electron configurations figured out, there is always more to understand when we're talking about atoms. Okay, I know at the beginning of this video I called these elements rule breakers, but hopefully now you can see they're actually not breaking the rules. They're just seeking that lowest energy confirmation. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and thanks so much for watching.